Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting yoga frogs and I'm gonna be sipping on my coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, green oxide, Mars black, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, and fluorescent orange. And of course you can switch those up as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that we'll use for some drawing later. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And I have a number one round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paints and brushes and even the piece of chalk will come with it. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference throughout the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're painting our background. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are green, black, and white. And my background is gonna include like an out of focus, swampy reeds kind of distant out of focus thing and then the water that's going to be underneath the lily pad so we're going to call that the background so i'm going to start with some green paint on my brush and i'm going to be doing a whole bunch of vertical type of stripes very chaotic i'm going to come down a little bit further than halfway down my canvas i've got a good amount of paint on my brush right now now i'm going to pick up white paint and as I do this, I'm not concerned about it being perfect. I want it to be imperfect because I want this to look like it is out of focus. It's off in the distance somewhere. You can have yours more green than mine. You can have yours. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black right now with my green. So I have black and green on my brush right now. I'm going to put some couple of darker streaks in through here. And again, yours can be lighter or darker than mine. It's going to be okay whatever way you decide to, to have yours in the, um, in the tonal value. I just picked up some more white so I can just kind of fill in my gaps with a little bit of white. The white helps at the end to, again, fill in those gaps, make it look a little bit softer, make it look a little bit more out of focus. And again, I'm not concerned about the perfection of it right now, just kind of getting it down at least halfway, maybe a little bit farther than halfway because we're gonna be putting the water kind of on top of it or intermingling with it. So I am just kind of making sure that I've got a good coverage. So that's why it's taken me a bit here just to make sure that I've filled in all of my gaps. And you, you know, maybe you want yours much smoother than mine. I'm just gonna go for this vertical type of appearance here. And once I've got that on there, now what I'm gonna do is I am going to be doing my water area in the same thought process with the green, white, and black. Only this time I'm gonna be doing an oval type of brush stroke. So I'm gonna start with green on my brush and the only part that really needs to kind of resemble an oval is around the edges. So you can kind of start in the middle and then just kind of move your brush 
in a little bit of an arcing motion around those edges and that's going to give you the the impression that it is in fact kind of like a either a little round pond or some kind of little bit of a moving water. I did cross it over into this um, background. So what will happen, because that's still a little wet, is it's gonna pull it through it and it's gonna make it look like natural ripply water. If your background is not still wet, what you can do is you can add a little bit of wetness going this way and then just move your brush over it lightly in the horizontal way and that will make you some natural looking ripples throughout your water. And then I'm just going to kind of, I still haven't picked up anything but green at this point. Right now I'm going to pick up a little bit of white just to kind of fill in a little bit of these gaps. So I'll put a tiny bit of black in a minute and then just make sure that center area is pretty covered. It doesn't have to be 100% covered in the center because you're gonna have a big, huge lily pad, but if you can get a good amount, I just picked up a touch of black so I can introduce and intermingle some little dark spots throughout my, my water area. And I'm not going too heavy on the black because again, I know that I'm gonna have a whole bunch of other things on here that will help to um, help to give me some depth and dimension, just making sure that I have this kind of curved look along the sides. Just making sure I've got it all painted in where I know that it's gonna be exposed outside of my lily pad. And then I'm just kind of fiddling with it until I've got the entire area covered in. And then once you've got this all done, just kind of, finish this up in through here. Got a little bit left over on this side here. And if you feel like you want more green or more white, feel free to add and subtract as much as you feel is necessary. You just wanna make sure that you've got a good coverage throughout the area. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do for my next step is I am going to put this large brush away. I'm gonna take out my, what am I gonna use for my next step? My medium brush. And I will get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting our lily pad. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using green, yellow, black, and white. And I do wanna forewarn you that before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a different shade of green. We used green oxide for the background. I'm gonna be using a more yellow green for the lily pad so it stands out. So how I'm gonna do that is I am going to, I've already pre-mixed a little bit so you can kind of see where I'm going. So I'm gonna mix green and yellow together. And if you want, depending on the shade of green that you have, you could also use a little bit of white in it as well. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna start mixing it together with my green. I definitely want this to be noticeably different than my green oxide. So I'm just gonna keep adding this yellow until it really is noticeably different and there's no confusion between the two colors. I really want it to be nice and yellowy green so it stands out from that um, from the background. And you wanna make sure that you mix yourself enough because you've got a pretty good sized lily pad that you're going for. So I'm just gonna make sure that I mix myself enough in through here. And I'm thinking that that's a pretty good amount. Maybe, oops, maybe a little bit more. Just got a little bit of black on my brush, but that's okay. Black and yellow makes green, weirdly. Um, or at least mine does. <laughs> so a little bit of black on my brush never hurt. So that's looking like a pretty good amount and a pretty good shade to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan out where I want my lily pad. So I'm gonna have mine coming up I would say about six inches or so. If this is about halfway up your canvas, I'm about two inches below that. And then it's gonna be pretty narrow because we're gonna be looking at it from the side. So on the, we'll, we'll make a little marker on the left-hand side. So if you come down maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and all the way over to your left-hand side, maybe about an inch away from the edge of the canvas, that's gonna be about the far tip of it. 
And then over on the right hand side, I've got myself a couple of little markers in through here and here. This is a little bit lower than here, maybe about two inches or so over to the side and then maybe about and maybe two inches. So up to two, somewhere in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect all of my dots. My lily pads kind of kind of go off the page over there. So I'm going to just have this like a long ripply type of oval shape. So I'm going to start in through here and then just kind of give myself a little bit of movement to meet that one and then come on over here with a little bit of movement in through here turn the corner like this and this bottom edge I'm going to have even more ripply than that top edge but all the while I know that I want to make meet this marker in through here so you can have as many ripples as you want you can have little ones you can have big ones you can really have it looking whatever whatever way you want this is a lily pad they come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes and stuff so just have fun with creating the edge shape to this and then once you've got the edge that you that you want you're just going to color in the entire area. I'm going to color it in with a pretty thin layer of paint because while it's drying or kind of cooking a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and I will do the shadow underneath it and then we'll come back and do a little bit of dimensional element to, to the top of it. So I'm going to just kind of put this thin layer of this green on here without worrying about any kind of details to it and then what I'll do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush in a second here and we'll put some shadows underneath these little edges of the uh, of the lily pad. So now that I've got that coat on there, just kind of brushing it out to make sure that it's kind of nice and thin and it doesn't take too, too long to start its drying process. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up some black and brown. Oh, I didn't say I was going to use brown. I'm using brown too. <laughs> a little bit of black and brown. I like to have brown on my brush when I do my shadows because it helps me to not go too black sometimes. Sometimes I really like it black, but the brown is nice and translucent and it helps me to control my darkness. So I have black and brown. I'm having my shadows underneath the pieces that pop up the most. So I'll have it under here, 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 here. And here, maybe a little bit over here too. I'm not going to have it on the back side because we don't see the shadows over there. So I've got black and brown on my brush and I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of a shadow underneath here. I'm going to do it underneath here. I'll get it to blend into the, um, the water area in a second here, but just kind of getting a couple of these areas on here. What I'm going to do is I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm dipping my brush a little bit in water. So this is going to allow me to spread this shadow out a little bit. So I'm going to have it pretty dark underneath these, these dips. And then if I want a tiny bit underneath the, the shallow part, I can certainly do that. But this helps me to just kind of spread it out and get it to dissipate a little bit. So it's the darkest right under the, um, right under the edge and then it kind of just blends into the the neighboring water so this is just one of those quick little um, methods that i do that helps me to spread out that that shadowy area so again just kind of reloading my brush with black and brown and sometimes i can get a couple done in one shot sometimes i feel like i can only do one area so it it'll be wherever your little your comfort zone is as you're going through your shadow making process so just kind of adding this shadow underneath here if i feel like it's drying too quickly on me i would go back to that one and work on that one before I finish these other ones. But I think I'm I think I'm doing good on my control. So I'm just putting this on here. Gonna dip my brush in my paper in my water, wipe it off on my paper towel, get this to kind of blend in a little bit. So again, I don't have too sharp of a shadow underneath. This is just helping me to blend it in a little bit with that that watery the the water underneath the lily pad and the water on my brush and then what I'm going to do maybe just pull this out a little bit to make it look like the edge of the lily pad is maybe up a little bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my highlights to the top 
of the and the dimensional element to the top of the lily pad. So I'm just washing and drying my brush. I'm going to be using predominantly white and my lily pad color. So I'm adding white to my brush. My highlights are going to be on the parts that bump up. And maybe I'll add a little bit on these edges too. So I've got white, 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 white. And then what I do is I start pulling it back towards the... Um, towards like the center of the lily pad or the back area of the lily pad. So I'm really just almost kind of adding these lumps or bumps on the actual pad itself to look like it's kind of in a ripply type of, um, type of manner, like a nice leaf that has the high spots and the low spots maybe from the veins of the leaf. So this way, I'm just kind of blending it in with that other green. So if your other, the base, oops, there's a fingerprint now. <laughs> if your base green has fully dried, that's okay. Just pick it up and pick it up on your brush and blend it in. I'm actually gonna um, pick some of my original green up in a minute so I can get this to be a little bit more blended and have a little bit more on the um, on the brightness but I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit on the back side as well so I just picked up the original green plus a touch of white and the reason why I want to just kind of get a little bit of action going on back here is just so if we do see some of these spots between the frogs will have a little bit more dimension other than just a flat color of green. You could even add a bit of black to it if you wanted to. If you wanted a little bit more um, darkness on that back side, you could, oops, I just had black on my brush on accident. Um, so here you see me adding black. <laughs> um, you can certainly add those little darker spots. I must've hit my shadow or something. You can add those darker spots and it'll just add more dimension to it. So don't feel like it just has to be that original green. You can certainly add more dimension to it and it's gonna make it look even more natural. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of amp up these little edges a bit because I like, I like the idea of them being nice and bright in through in through these areas just giving myself that real dimensional element to it you can even add a little bit of lightness at the at these um, bottom edges that are reaching the water this will make it look like there's a little bit of ripple in that water as the lily pad is hitting the water so that's a neat little trick to um, get that aspect in the water as well because that'll tell that the maybe the the little frogs are making some movement happen on the lily pad and it's making making these little ripples along the edges and then I just kind of keep playing with it until I feel like I've got some good shape to my lily pad I like to kind of do this and then step away from it um, and see what it looks like from a distance what it looks like as it's drying because that will help me um, to make any adjustments or make anything more vibrant or, you know, settle it down a little bit, whatever I feel is necessary. And then once you've got this step done, we are going to be utilizing our chalk for the next step. And I do want to kind of give you that little vote of confidence, confidence that most of this is going to be covered by your frogs anyway. <laughs> so don't worry if it doesn't come out 100% as you had, you know, anticipated it to come out. It's just, you know, a lily pad that has much of lots of bumps and stuff on it. And we're going to have frogs that are going to be frolicking and doing their yoga on it so if it's not perfect it'll be all right and then we're just going to switch to our chalk so you can just get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're drawing an outline for our cute yoga frogs I'm going to be using my chalk this way if you know we need to make adjustments chalk is easy to do that with um, I'm going to be having three on mine. You could certainly do one, you could do two, you could have four, you could have them however many you would like to. I'm going to have one in the center and then I'll have one to the left and one to the right. These two will be in kind of seated positions and then this one's going to be standing up. So I'm going to kind of um, explain how I do these with just basic shapes and we don't need them to be perfect at this point because we're going to be painting on top of it, but this will just give us a good kind of foundation on how to build them. So I'm going to do all of them. I will start with the, the midsection or the, the, um, the belly part 
and then I'll work my way off of that. And the belly parts are gonna be kind of like, I don't know, like a frumpy, like bean kind of shape. So I'm gonna start with this center one in through here. I'm gonna have the body coming about up to here and maybe down right about in through here. This one's gonna be kind of leaning over a little bit. So I'm gonna have it kind of um, a little arcing top in through here and then I'm gonna bump out the belly in through there and then I'm gonna have it like this. So that's how I'm going to start my first one. <laughs> and then I'm going to, everyone I'll start with the body, then I'm going to move to the head and we'll do the arms and legs after that. So then the head, I'm going to start with an oval. So I'm going to have my oval in through here and it's, you can cross over your, your body a little bit if you want to. Then I'm going to do a circle in the middle of the head like that. And then I'm going to do two more circles that are going to be taller than the center one. These will be for my eyes. So I'm going to have one about there and one about there. And you can have them wider than your cheeks if you want to. Totally up to you. And then I'm going to have my arms. So I'm going to have one arm coming up into the air. So for my arms, you can make them thin or wide, whatever works for you. This one's going to kind of cross behind here and come up. In through here and I'm gonna have maybe a couple of little frog fingers sticking out in through there on the um, bottom here I'm gonna have another arm that's gonna come out in this direction and it's gonna meet where my leg is gonna go maybe right in through there and now I'm gonna have two legs so one of them is gonna be kind of in an Indian style position seated like that where it's cro the legs are crossed maybe we'll have a couple of toes coming out in through there and again this isn't going to look totally awesome right now until we get the the colors in and then maybe i'll have the other leg coming in through here where this arm can kind of rest on it with a couple of little cute frog toes in through there so that's that one i'm going to go to my right one this one's also going to be seated maybe in like a prayer kind of um kind of position. So I'm going to start this one with its top of the body in through here and maybe the bottom here. This one's not going to be quite as um, bent as that one. So I'm just going to kind of have this one with a little bit of a round belly in through here and maybe in through here, something like this. I'm going to have the head again is going to be with an oval type of shape for the main part of it. I'm going to have a circle for the mid part, and then I'm gonna have two big circles for the eyes that are gonna pop out along the side of it. And then for the arms on this one, it's gonna be like in a prayer position, so the hands are actually gonna be in here. So all I really need to do for this one is give myself a couple of like elbows. So I'm gonna put that one there, and they don't even have to be even, cause you know, our elbows will make different different ways when we, when we have them in position. And then I'm gonna just do a couple of loops one loop here for a knee, one loop here for a knee, and then maybe a couple of little toes as if maybe this leg is gonna be in front of that one. And then I'm gonna do this guy over here. So this one's gonna be standing. So I'm gonna have its um, top of the body somewhere in through here, maybe the bottom somewhere in through here. So this is gonna be a little bit, um, a little bumped out on this left-hand side because he's gonna be in a fun, um, warrior type position and then this one's going to be somewhere in here. I'm going to have my um, oval for my main part of my face in through there. I'm going to have my circle for the center part. I'm going to have my two circles for the eyes in through here. Something like that. And I have my eyes going a little bit further than the cheeks but I mean, there's lots of different kinds of frogs, so yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. And then I'm going to have the arms are going to be above its head, kind of like this uh, above the head. So I'm going to just have a little sliver of the arm showing here and maybe a little sliver showing here. And then I'll travel above the eyes in through here and maybe in through here and then a little piece going up in through there. Maybe maybe I'll use a pencil so you guys can see really kind of what I'm doing here, something like that and that, just so you can see. I know I'm going through a lighter area in through here, which sometimes makes it tough to see on camera, so something like that. And then my legs, 
I'm going to have just one coming down here and then one is going to be um, kind of perched on top of the other one. So I'm going to have maybe one coming down in this direction with a little cute frog toes, something like that. Looks a little chicken right now, but it'll look more like a frog later. <laughs> and then I've got this one coming out this side in through here. Maybe we've got the thigh in through there and then a couple little toes coming off the side in through here. And that is all I'm going to be doing for my um, for my outlines. So I'm going to be using my medium brush for the next step so you can just get ready. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our frogs. So you guys are going to be master green mixers by the end of this, <laughs> this lesson because we're making another shade of green. We're going to call this one our frog green. <laughs> we already did lily pad green and we did like mossy green. Now we're doing frog green. So how I'm going to do this is I'm in essence going to take my lily pad thought with my green and yellow and I'm adding brown to it. So it's going to be like a warmer kind of more of like an army kind of green. So I've magically pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm uh, where I'm going. This was my lily pad green. I'm going to put them right next to each other so you can see the difference between the two. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm taking my green, I'm taking some brown, almost like equal parts, and some yellow and mixing them together to get something that is different. It doesn't, yours doesn't have to be exactly the same color as mine, but something that is noticeably different than the other two greens that you've created. So this is pretty good for me, maybe a little bit more brown. Again, you can always just take what you've mixed and bring your brush right next to the other two greens to see or to confirm that it is in fact different, but I think I want a little bit more brown to this in through here, just again, because I want it to be noticeably different than what I've got. So this is pretty good to me. I can see a definite distinct difference between it. And then once I've got the shade of green that I want, there is no fancy brush stroke involved here at this um, juncture. All I'm going to be doing is coloring in my entire frog. So I'm going to bring it right to the edge of my um, of my chalk marks. You might find that as you're going through this process, you're like, mm, I think I want a little bit a bigger part here or a smaller part there. And if that's the case, you just kind of ignore your chalk mark in certain areas because you'll be able to erase that as much as you need to because it's very easy to, to erase. And if your green is too similar to whatever it's sitting next to, you can adjust it on the fly if you want to, add a little bit more brown or a little bit more yellow or what do you, whatever you need to. But just know that we will be adding highlights and shadows and a bunch of other information to the frog. So even when you're nearing the other color, if it's not terribly different, it's gonna be okay because when we go to add our highlights and shadows, that's gonna make the and all the other dimensional elements of the frog, that will make the frog pop out in front of whatever the color is behind it. So don't fear the um, fact that yours, your green isn't, you know, 100% totally different from the other greens. I mean, there's going to be areas where you're in the same tonal value and even if your color is different, it may not be that noticeably different because it's just as light or as dark as whatever the, the color is that's next to it. So I'm just kind of going through this. When I get to my areas of my slender um, appendages, I'm just going to kind of use the tip of my brush, give myself a couple of little fingers, they don't have to be perfect. We're going to be adding some little orangey um, decorative uh, suction cup things on the ends of their of their hands and their feet. So that's um, you know we're just giving the illusion or the impression of some 
some frog fingers and hands and stuff. So nothing has to be perfect when you're doing a fun painting like this. We just we just roll with whatever happens, happens, and we enjoy the process. And these are kind of illustrative cartoon type figures. So there are no rules. You get to make them into whatever whatever you want them to be. So if you want yours to be you know, larger than mine or more slender than mine or have, you know, smaller eyes than mine, you can make yours into whatever you want. That's the beauty of doing this kind of painting when we don't um, have to make it look like a, a human or a just, you know, an exact place or, you know, you can just really have fun with your creative juices and, and make it your own. So, you know, maybe I want this thigh to be a little bit bigger. So I just poofed that out a little bit because I know I'm going to have kind of a, a good sized leg over here. So I want them to kind of match a little bit. And then when I get to the edge of this one, I'm just going to give myself a couple little toes that are coming off the edge. I'm only going to do three toes on my frog, but I'm I'm not a frog expert, so there may be more toes that I should be making or less toes than I think I should be than I should be making, but I'm just having fun and putting three toes, <laughs> three toes and three fingers. Um and then I'm just going to kind of go through the whole thing on this uh, these two hands up here. I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of a um of a little rectangle kind of shape and then I'm just gonna kind of go and your arms may end up bigger or smaller you can certainly make yours you know more narrow if you wanted to you could certainly use your smaller brush when it comes to the um, the appendages if you want to make sure that those are nice and nice and small I'm not even terribly concerned about my edges being perfect at this point because I know that again I'm gonna be doing uh, another pretty invasive step to to finishing my my frog my, my yoga frogs um so i'm not terribly concerned i'm doing my my arm over here make sure that it kind of makes sense with the arm that's up above and of course if you paint into your face or anything like that it's totally okay just kind of bringing this all the way down in through here and again your your frogs may take on a new shape as you're doing this and it'll all work out in the end I can assure you of that and then I just have my little legs to go and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got your base coat for your frogs on here. Just giving myself a couple little toes. Um, once you've got, oh, and like in through here, you can bring this down if you want it to look, you know, like there's a little bit more of a thigh in through here. Just have fun with it. Frog legs. I've eaten one or two in my day and they're really delicious. So whenever I'm painting frogs, I'm like, oh, give it a little bit of meat on that thigh. <laughs> but you can certainly have fun with the size of your frog legs. And then once you've got this, this done, again, we will be using the same brush for the next step, giving myself a couple of little toes in through here and you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting some flowers and their reflections. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black, brown, orange, white, and that might be it. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So how I'm gonna do this, I wanted to just kind of flank the edges of my canvas, add some color. So I'm gonna have almost like little pond reeds and foliage along the edges and these pretty peach flowers, imaginary impressionistic kind of flowers <laughs> along the edges. And then I'll have gentle reflections in the water just to bring some of that pretty color in. So how I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with brown and black on my brush to give me almost what I'll refer to as like the shadowy areas within these um, this foliage kind of stuff I'm doing. I'm gonna start it on the bottom of where we're gonna put the flowers and nearing the, the pond or the waterway, somewhere in through here. While I have the, the dark on my brush, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of mess up the edge going in an upward kind of direction. And then I'm gonna give myself these just almost like long pieces of grass 
in a carefree kind of manner coming out from the edge. Maybe you have some, you know, yours darker than mine. Maybe some of yours lean over. Just have fun with putting some of this information in here. I'm going to just put a little bit in through here and then I'll go ahead and do that to the other side. So again, just brown and black on my brush. Going to do a little bit down in this area down at the where the water uh, kind of meets the the sky or the, the the top part of the background and you just want it to kind of look like it it's going naturally into mother nature or being created naturally by mother nature so just kind of rubbing my brush and just giving a little kind of out of focus appearance to it maybe again a couple kind of coming off the side you could i suppose even have some behind the frog's head you could put them you know however firm you want them to be and then once i've got that done i've got that little kind of dark base to um my my foliage area i'm going to wash and dry my medium brush and i'm going to create like a rusty type of color for the base of my flowers so i'm going to use some of my fluorescent orange plus a touch of brown to get this really pretty dark rusty type of color with a lot of this orange in there so it gives it this richness to the background of the of the flowers i can use this for stems as well as for the base of the flowers if i want to so i've got a really pretty dark orangey rusty color and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of sprinkle this in with a couple of little um, additional pieces of my wild grass we'll consider this to be like the stems of them and then maybe I'll just kind of dot in a couple of round areas maybe maybe some little flower petals coming out really just kind of have fun with mark making at this point to give yourself the illusion of these wild flowers that have just kind of dazzled the edges of our canvas and are just bringing a, a nice life to to the um to the painting so again kind of starting with some stems over on this right hand side maybe this one is a little bit more um, free flowing and has a little bit more substance to it than the one on the other side but again you can certainly make yours into whatever that you want I'm going to put a pretty bright um, a additional layer to this in a second but right now just kind of doing my mark making and giving myself this you know structure where I can add some vibrant colors onto it but it really looks nice and natural with these different tones within it and then once I've got that on there I am going to take the same color and bring a little bit into the water for the reflection so just a teeny tiny bit you don't even need much on your brush I'm going to kind of wipe my brush off on my paper towel just to give myself just a little hint of this color down somewhere else within the water so it really feels like we've got a nice reflection going on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some really bright uh, the orange color so if you wanted to you could wash your brush or you could just use it with that um, rusty color but I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to pick up my fluorescent orange and I'm going to add another dimensional layer to my flowers so wherever you had that that maroon or that dark rusty color you can add a bit of this vibrant orange you can do circles you can do dots you can do swipes whatever is working for you I do keep some of that darker tone it within that so it doesn't um it so the orange doesn't take over and make it just one solid color and then i'll just kind of have fun with making some additional type of flowers in through here i'm going to add white in a minute to add to the illusion of this to make it have even more of a dimensional element so again i'm just kind of having fun with my mark making going to give myself a little patch of these these flowers down in through here and then without washing my brush i'm picking up some white paint and this is going to add this bit of additional highlight throughout and I don't over blend it I'm just kind of taking it and adding a little bit throughout these um, flowers as they're wet 
because this will allow that white to kind of blend in and give it give that orange a couple of different tones to it so it's not just white that I'm adding to it because that orange is a little bit wet underneath it allows me to give almost like some pockets of light orange because it is blending with it on the fly and then I'm going to put both of these colors in my water as well so you can again have fun with however you want these to represent if you want them brighter or duller feel free to to play with that a bit and then I'm not going to wash my brush I've got the orange and the white on my brush and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle in a couple of little reflections throughout the water just giving it that um, appearance that these colors are kind of transitioning and you know allowing for this additional color to happen within the water and again this is a great way to just harmonize your painting and get everything to speak to each other and to get all these colors to look like they belong together and they're working together and again you could certainly utilize your small brush to do something like this i'm not using much paint on my brush at all just these little kind of cute hints of the color throughout this water and if you get to a point you're like oh my god i put way too much of that orange in there you can just kind of pick up some of your some of your background green which would have been the green oxide and work that into it you can also pick up a touch more white and put little kind of sparkly reflections throughout your water. Oops, I just got that on his leg. It's okay. <laughs> and you can certainly have fun with getting the movement in the water by adding these little additional white spots which will give these extra little ripples throughout it and if you bump into your frog like I just did don't worry about it we're going to be finishing our frogs with lots of details so it's okay if you accidentally bump into one or two of them at this point and then we are going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful foliage and flowers in here and all of your great reflections you can put this medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the shadows on our frogs. So I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are black, brown, and my frog green. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm, I'm utilizing the shadows to help separate these body parts. So like the eyes are gonna get shadows underneath them, the face will the arms they'll get a little shadow between them shadows underneath the feet and all that good stuff as i do this i'm going to be placing the shadows in what i believe to be the side that is away from our light source so the light source is going to be up top so anything that is on the opposite side of the body part would get a shadow. So if I'm doing like this head in through here, I'd have, if my light is up here, I'd have a shadow underneath here, underneath my eyes like this and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be talking you through each and every one as I do, but sometimes as, oops, a little, a little gnat just this must be very realistic if I have little flies coming on to meet my frogs. Um, as I go through this, I will be talking through why I'm putting the shadow where I'm putting it. And then I just blend it into the neighboring frog color. The neighboring main color is not going to look awesome yet because we'll finalize that with our highlights and our, and our last coat. So I'm going to start with this little guy in here. I'm going to always usually start with black and brown on my brush because that helps me to control the lightness and darkness of my shadows. I'm going to start on the head because it's a pretty um, obvious piece and it'll be easy to kind of start the party with this. So I'm just going to kind of go underneath at the bottom of the head in through here and then I pick up a little bit of my frog green just to get it to blend in. I can do it underneath the eyes as well. So just giving myself a little bit of shadow underneath where that eye is. I can pull it right into the um, the face a little bit and you can have your shadows really firm or really um, soft it's going to be totally up to you but if you do it a little bit darker than you had anticipated don't worry because we'll be able to um, dull it down a little bit when you go to do the other parts I do want a little bit of a shadow on the body from the head so a little bit of brown 
and black will help me to just get a little bit of a shadow on that body and through here I'm going to continue to just pick up my black and brown. I want a little bit of a shadow on the inside of this arm here. I want a little bit at the bottom side of this arm. So I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm just kind of utilizing a, a light touch in order to get this shadow on here. I want a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And because I'm, I use a, um, a student grade paint, which tends to be nice and fluid for me, and it allows me to get these continual lines. But if yours isn't as fluid as mine, you can always touch your brush in your water while you're doing this process and it will allow you to have more um, continual lines as you go through this process and let you blend them a little bit better. I'm going on the edge of this belly in through here and this is gonna bring it all the way down to like the, the ground part. I'm picking up some of my base color green right now because I want this to blend in with the belly. So I just put a little bit of that base color on there so I can get this to blend in. And of course this is the shadowed side to me so that's why I put it on the right hand side. I'm going to put a little bit underneath the, the um, fingers in through here. I'm going to put a little bit underneath the leg. So as I'm hitting the lily pad itself, I'm going to put a shadow on the lily pad too, but first I'm going to concentrate on my little body parts and then once I've got it there then I can decide how much I want to put on the um, lily pad. So I know I'm going to have a couple of like round little toes in through here. This is going to be my shadow on my lily pad. I'm going to put a little bump here because I know I'm going to have a little bump for that one um, and I want it to look like it's up in the air a little bit. So this is my shadow on my on my lily pad right now so I'm just kind of utilizing my a little bit more black on my brush so this gets to be a little bit darker than the um, than the body part itself and just bringing this shadow out just a little bit and again just kind of working my way through this first guy here so you can kind of see what my thought process is I'm gonna go ahead this piece in through here is a little confusing because I'm going to have the leg in front of the body here. So I'm going to pick up some brown and get this to just kind of separate out. So I'm going to put a little bit on that belly and this will help to just kind of show form on the um, on the belly but I just want to make sure that I have that that leg separated so I don't as the painter get confused as I'm going through the process. Now I can go ahead and put the shadow on the bottom side of the leg, get it to blend in with the top part of the leg a little bit. Going in for my shadow on my on my toes, something like that, and then picking up a little bit more black to do my shadow underneath the toes. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna have a little um, bubble because I know I'm gonna have a little bubble on that toe. I'm gonna have a little bubble on this toe, something like that, and then on this leg, as it's nearing the knee, I want the knee to look like it's off the ground a little bit. So I'm going to bring this shadow away from the leg right about here and just give it a little bit of a curve. And that's going to make it look like the knee is lifted off of the ground and it's casting a shadow onto the ground, something like that. And of course you can play with that a little bit more. I'm going to move to um, this right guy over here. So again, just brown and black are on my brush right now. I'm going to start it in the same way that I did the other one where I'm going to start it underneath that face. So just kind of bringing this um, shadow underneath the face, getting it to blend in a little bit with that frog green of the of the actual um, face itself. So I'm just picking up a little bit of my of my frog green. And again, if you do yours too light or too dark, don't worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and put a little shadow underneath the, um, the frog head just to make it look like it's casting a shadow on the body, something like that. I'll go ahead and do the eyes. So a little bit of black and brown are going to get these eyes to separate out from the actual face, something like this. And of course, you can certainly make your 
shadows bigger or smaller than mine, whatever, whatever kind of works for you. This mark will kind of go away when we do the highlight on the eye, so don't feel like that's a, uh, a permanent marker on mine and my piece of grass I will put behind the face also. So the next area is going to be these arms, which are a little confusing because they're sitting in front of the body. So I'm going to go for my elbows first and I'm going to um, put kind of an, a shadow underneath the elbow and then as I bring I'm going to bring it into the body like this and right about almost midway, if this is midway in my body, I'm going to kick this up just a little bit, something like that and I'll do the same thing on the other side. So like this and then just kick it up just a little bit. This is going to make it look like the wrist and then we'll have a little separation or a little area where the hands kind of meet in the middle. I'm going to give a shadow underneath these arms just while I'm thinking about it so I don't confuse myself here. Giving myself a little shadow underneath them, maybe a little shadow on the right side of this body also, somewhere in through there. I have to give a forearm in through here. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to put the shadow inside where the chest is. I'm going to leave my arms unpainted right now, but in order to make it look like I've got a shadow in through there, I've got to kind of give myself little outlines. So I'm going to kind of outline where I want my fingers to go. So I've got a couple of little fingers in through here, something like that. I'm going to bring this down to like where I feel the wrist would be. I'll do the same thing over here. Maybe we just see one of these fingers and then I'm going to just bring this down where I feel the wrist would be. So somewhere in through there. Then I'm going to give myself the outline or the thought of where the forearm would be. So somewhere in through here. So I'm just kind of giving myself these little outlines. So I'm going to darken that inner area. And then maybe this is where the arm is, and maybe this is where that arm is. And then I just darken this inside little shape that we just created. And that's going to give me the shadow inside by the chest that is being um, created by the arms that are around it. And of course you can tweak that all you want. I think the bottom part of his arm is a little wonky looking, so we're going we're gonna to just bring that in something like that. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the legs. So again, just my my green or my brown and my black on here. I've got him in a kind of a crossed leg position. So I'm going to give myself a gentle kind of outline where I want the legs to create to to sit. This one is going to be in front. So I'm just going to kind of go from this crevice over to here and then just give myself a little gentle outline where I want those feet to be so maybe we've got a little toe here a little toe here and a little toe here and of course yours might end up being a different shape than mine whatever works is totally fine I'm gonna give myself I got a little shadow there maybe just um, this is gonna be the whole leg in through here that's looking good and then I'm gonna give this the shadow underneath my leg so shadow under there shadow under here making it kind of blend in with my base green frog color. I just picked up some of my green frog color just to make sure that I've got this fully kind of um, blended in a little bit. Maybe blend this in a little bit more too so we can have that form underneath the belly. That works out. And then I'll put my um, firm shadow on the, on the lily pad. So just picking up some black going in for this similarly to how I did the other one. So maybe I've got this little bump for where I'm going to have the little suction cup on the end of that, that toe. Same thing here, maybe a little bump for the suction cup, little dark shadow in between those toes. And then as I come over to this left hand leg, I think I'm going to pull this in just a little bit in through there. There we go. And as I come over towards this left hand leg, this is where I'm going to get this leg also to come right off the canvas or right off the lily pad by pulling it away just a little bit and giving it that, that shape that looks like it's casting a shadow from that knee right onto the surface below. And then I have one last one over here to do. So again, just brown and black on my brush. I'm going to approach it the same way, starting at the head in through here, giving myself this shadow underneath the head, picking up some of my 
frog green to get this to kind of blend in just a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect blend at this point. You're going to be um, adding the highlights and stuff, so that will help to um, make it blend even more. I'm going to put a little bit of my shadow underneath this eye in through here, a shadow on this eye in through here. And these shadows on the eyes are kind of a combination of a shadow on the eye as well as a shadow on the, the face itself. So that's something that you can have fun deciphering how much of each you want to do. Up in through here, I'm just going to put a little shadow. I'm going to have this arm in front of that arm. So I'm just putting maybe a little more black so we can see this one. Just a little tiny shadow right in here. And I suppose if you wanted to put a little shadow in between the hands, you certainly could as well. I don't really think that that's totally necessary, but if you wanted to, feel free to do so. I'm going to put um, a little shadow underneath the head on the body itself. So a little bit of um, brown, maybe with a touch of the black. And if you, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be as dark as the shadow on the face. And if it goes too dark, no worries. You can always make it a little bit lighter. I think this inside of this arm would be a little dark too. And maybe some of that arm, maybe. And then I'm just going to kind of get this to blend out down and through here. I'm going to put a shadow on the right side of this body, maybe on the right side of that arm too, a little bit. Right side of this body, because that to me is where I would see it. I might put a little on the left side of the body too, because I feel like he's standing straight up. So he might have a little bit of shadow coming in through here or maybe from his arm or something. He could have shadows everywhere, I guess. He's going to have to have some shadow underneath his leg, too. So I've got the black and the brown on my brush. Pulling that in through here. I brought that in a little bit too far. That's okay. And then maybe a little shadow underneath here. And again, not really doing a whole heck of a lot. Just wherever I feel it would be darker. Bottom of this leg in through here. This will have a shadow in through there. This foot might be casting a little shadow on this leg in through here. So that, that could work. A little shadow maybe on this left side. This leg, I guess, could have shadow on both sides just because of how the body is positioned. I'm going to put maybe a little shadow on the bottom side of these toes. Just a little tiny darkness in through there. A little shadow underneath these toes or along the bottom of them. So this frog, and of course I've got probably little suction cups that are going to happen too. This frog, because of the position that it's in, I feel that there would be a, a kind of a solid shadow underneath it. If my light source is up top, we would just be getting a distorted kind of shape down in through here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow for this leg over here. So if this, if you were to have a light above, I, I think it would go somewhere in through here is what I'm going to do for the shadow of this leg. And then I'm going to just kind of put a, a, a roundish area of shadow to represent the body from, from above. So it may be right, it may be wrong, but it to me it looks like a, it looks like a good enough shadow that will be telling the story of the light being above it. So you might find that you want to put yours a little bit differently, but when I was creating this, that's, that's what made the most sense to me. If my light source was above, I would have this shadow kind of cast, kind of like a tree, how the, the shadow underneath the tree is, you know, you don't just see the tree trunk, you're going to see the, the shape of the tree from above. So that's where my, my thought process was when I was creating this shadow. And then we are going to use this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your frog shadows in place, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we're adding the highlights to our frogs and finishing their main body parts. So I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are my frog green, yellow, white, and probably some brown too. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be brightening up all the areas that I feel are popping out the most or would be sh shined upon by the light above. So on the frog faces, I will have wherever I want that mouth to pop out and it's going to be kind of in little different spots. On my eyes, I'm going to have all of the eyes are going to be closed. So I'm really just looking to show the form of them and have them lightest where I feel that they would pop out the most. The bellies, I'll get them to pop out. And then I'll have highlights on all of the other body parts that are going to be popping out the most. <laughs> so mostly I'm going to be using white and yellow, but I will use a lot. I'll use my frog green as well and on the bellies I might use a little brown too. So I'm going to start with this one over here so we can kind of get the idea of what I'm going to do. So I'm putting white and yellow on my brush at the same time. This is going to help me to um, create where I feel that the um, part popping out the most would be and to me I'm going to have my nose be the part that's popping out the most which will be kind of like the top part of the lip area and then once I've got that in there I'm going to pick up my frog green without washing my brush and just kind of get it to blend into the rest of the area. So you might find that you want yours to be more vibrant than mine or more subtle than mine. It's going to be totally up to you how bright you want it to go and you can always just kind of keep elevating it by adding a touch of white into that brightest bright of spots. So you have fun with the intensity of that. And I'm going to do the same thing for the eyes. So white and yellow is what I've got on my brush right now. And I'm going to start in the area that I feel is going to be the brightest. So somewhere in this vicinity. And then I just kind of blend it out. I'll pick up that um, the frog green to make sure that I've got it as blended into the shadowy areas as I want and then I will add any additional little bit of highlight. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my yellow and white because I think I want this to be a bit more bright up at the top to show the form in through here and then maybe even a little bit of a highlight up at the tippy top to show from the light source the the brightness on it and this will also help it to stand out in front of that those arms too so and as you're going through this process if you come to a point where your where your paint is not drying fast enough on you just move to another body part and come back to um to the to whatever area you want to to continue to work on and if you want these to pop out more in front of the area behind them you can always add a little bit more black to that shadow that will help you to get those to pop out even more that's going to be a personal preference on your part how you want them to um, pop out in the intensity so again yellow and white is where I'm starting for the highlight up here on the arms. These aren't gonna take very much at all, just kind of little yellow and white for a little bit of a highlight on these. I don't think I'm gonna need to do much else other than that for them. I think I want this to be a little bit brighter, so I'm just kinda, as I'm going back down the body, just adding a little bit more yellow and white to here. Sometimes, as I, again, as I'm building these, um, these light layers of sorts, they, they will take a, a minute or two or a couple of layers just to get them into the intensity that you want. Um, on the body here, I'm going to be using, I think I'm going to use brown and white as my highlight for my belly. So brown and white is going to give me this little bit of a tan look in the belly area. And then I will pick up my frog green to get it to blend out along the edges and just get it to dissipate and blend in with the neighboring areas and then I will maybe amp it up just a little bit more with maybe a touch of yellow and white in that tiny belly part in through here and again you can have yours lighter or darker or maybe you want your frog to be totally a different color than mine so you can have fun with that. The legs I'm going to use my yellow and white I think, only, I think I'll only use the brown on the belly areas. So yellow and white, I'm going to add my 
big highlight in through here. I think maybe I'd have a little highlight here, maybe coming down this leg, but maybe not as intense. So maybe a little bit more yellow in through here. Just kind of adding these bits of information to get um, the, the frog parts to stand out even more. And you know, the toughest part I think on this highlighting step is getting that face to um, take on the shape that you want it to and those round, you know, getting that nose to have a little bit more shape other than it just being flat. Um, so I think that's probably the most difficult part about this and you'll have plenty of practice on the other frogs. And of course you can keep coming back and getting, you know, like I said, making areas brighter or darker if you want to as they dry. We all know that they can shift colors on us a little bit. So sometimes I find myself going back and fiddling probably more than I should. I'm gonna go on to my next one now. So again, yellow and white is where I'm starting with my highlighted part. I want this frog's head to look like he's kind of back a little bit. So I'm gonna have my, my mouth area kind of coming up almost between the eyes and through here. And then that's gonna represent my brightest area. And I've got plenty of paint on my brush right now. So I'm gonna kind of release it on these eyes and through here. And then what I'll do is just kind of get this to, to blend out. Maybe a little bit more yellow on my brush right now just to get this to blend into the neighboring areas. I'm gonna pick up the, the green in a minute as well, the frog green, but just wanna get these kind of blended out before they dry on me too, too much. So that's good, and just blending this out. And of course you can see as I'm adding these highlights to the eyes, they're starting to pop out as well. So that's, you know, that's the whole intent here is to get these pieces that we want to have that iconic frog look to them stand out so you know the eyes pop out a whole bunch and then those cute mouths they they tend to you know protrude from the face i just picked up some of my um, base frog green to get this to all work together in through here and just getting them to to blend in and all look like they belong together I'll move up to that arm with some yellow and white on my brush. And again, when you get to these smaller pieces, you really aren't gonna have to do a whole heck of a lot. Just kind of adding that little yellow and white highlight. And if you need to um, get any area to blend in, just picking up that, that original frog color, the, the frog green, just putting a little more yellow and white on that and maybe a little touch on his belly in through here because I'm feeling like this little belly part would be popping out a little bit. I'm gonna hit this arm while I have the yellow and the white on my brush right now. So just kind of bringing this down here and you'll see as soon as I start to do this that these pieces of the of the puzzle and of the of the frog just really start to pop out which is awesome and it, it makes for a really fun experience as you're painting it. I just picked up some frog green. Um, as you're painting it to be to realize all the work that you did is paying off, you know, all the all the pieces of the puzzle that you've done make sense. I'm picking up some brown and white to get this belly to kind of pop out like the other one did. So brown and white and just kind of rubbing it out, give that really, you know, poofy belly. Picked up some of my frog green to get it to blend in along the sides. And all the while I'm watching where I have my shadowy areas so I don't um, overpaint it and go into those too much. But if you do end up doing that, it's all right. You can, you can always pick up, I'm picking up some of my brown just to make sure that I still have that shadow along that edge and you can certainly do any more on that. And then I just have my legs. So wiping my brush off, picking up some yellow and white, getting this leg to, to pop out a little bit more in through here. So I feel like the edge of this leg would have the lightest part from the, from the light above. And I just continue to pick up my yellow and white. I'm gonna get my highlight on my little toes. And of course, we're gonna do the bubbles on the toes in the, the bubbles, the suction cups on the toes in a minute. Just wanna get these on here. And picked up some of my green just to make sure that I've got this blended in with the shadowy area underneath. 
So highlight on the top and then pick up that um, the frog green to get it to blend in. And you know, I'm calling out the colors as I'm picking them up, but you may find yourself needing to do it in a different order. So, you know, just consider my highlights as the, the yellow and white, except for the belly. The belly is gonna be brown and white predominantly. And then you blend that highlight in with your base frog green. So again, I just picked up my base frog green color, getting it to blend in. And if you want any more areas more yellow, you pick up a little bit more yellow. It's gonna be your call as to the intensity of the yellows or the greens. Maybe you pull out you know, a, a different color and put polka dots on your frogs because there can be frogs with different polka dots colors. So, you know, just have fun with it. I'm gonna go ahead and move to this guy over here. I'm gonna um, use my yellow and white to start off. This guy, he's got his face down a little bit more, so I'm gonna have his brightest area for his nose in through here, and then just kind of pulling it out into the sides like this, and then just getting it to kind of uh, blend in with the rest of the face. I just picked up a bit more yellow, get it to blend in a little bit more. And of course, like I said, you could have yours much more with much more expression on the face than mine. Once we get the mouth line on there, it turns into a super cute thing <laughs> because it'll it'll all of a sudden come to life once it has a mouth that can open and has a has some um, eyes that we know are are ca calmly closed while it is um, doing its yoga practice here. I'm picking up some of my frog green just to get these to blend in over on the sides and down by that um, by that neck area. Maybe a little bit more, oh, a little bit more lightness over here. Get it, get it to look like he's really enjoying his yoga time here. <laughs> and of course, you can play with the expressions by, you know, just pulling up that corner like I just did. Just gave him more of a grin kind of look as opposed to a, you know, calm style of look. And I'm going to put this light area in through here. I think I have a good quantity of paint on my brush where I can just kind of rub it out right now. And, you know, you'll, uh, over time, gain the confidence in knowing how much paint to have on your brush and utilizing um, the the right brightness or darkness but as you're as you're starting this painting adventure and learning your different you know brushes that you like and the different colors that you like it all you know is an easier process if you can adapt layering to it and accept that layering makes everything look better. The more layers you have on it, the more realistic it's going to look. And it becomes a really fun process when you know that the kind of the, the more you do sometimes, the, the, the better it ends up, ends up looking and you can just kind of keep fiddling and enjoying the process as, as you go through it. I think I need to pick up a little bit more of my frog green just to get this to um, make sure that it blends in and I think I'm going to pull up a little bit more shadow over on this side in through here with a little bit of brown just so I can maybe a touch of black too just so I can make sure this eyeball kind of sits apart from the um, from the face itself so again just kind of tweaking it you know I'm seeing what what's working and what needs a little adjustment and then I'm going to go ahead and move down to my belly so I wipe my brush off I'm picking up some some white and brown to get my my cute froggy Buddha kind of belly going on in through here. And I'm just using a different tone with the brown and white so it looks a little bit different from the other body parts. And of course you can get this to stick out as much as you want. The lighter you make it in that center area, the more it's gonna look like it's really popping out in front. Oh, I missed, I think I want a couple of toes over here too, which I didn't talk about earlier. A little, maybe a couple of little toes popping out over here. Um, I'm actually gonna put pick up a little bit of brown and black because I wanna have a little, I want two little toes up here. I just noticed as I'm doing the belly that I want to have a couple little toes sticking out here. So just kind of putting those in there, um, wiping my brush off, picking up some yellow and white to 
again add the highlights onto my forearms and stuff so yellow and white I'm gonna pull this out towards that elbow so yellow and white is gonna pull this out to the elbow maybe a little bit of this highlight over on the edge of the arm and this is where again you can tweak it as much as you want to if you feel you want those edges lighter add a little bit more white if you want them a little bit more yellow add more yellow it's going to be that visual preference on your part i just picked up some um, frog green with a little bit of yellow in order to get this to blend in a little bit more i'm going to do those fingers so just a little bit of um, yellow and white i don't need much on these because they're probably uh, uh, under the um, shadow of the of the face a little bit so I don't think I need to or want to go too bright on those I'm going to move down to the um, legs so again just a little yellow and white is going to give me my my highlight over here and you can see it's pretty much a repetitive process what I'm doing I'm I'm adding that yellow and white to my brush I'm saying okay here's the top side of this object I'm putting that little bit of yellow and white and then I'm getting that area to blend in with my frog green which is what I just picked up and you can again intensify the look of that highlight by just adding a bit more white if you want that need to pop out a little bit more you just put a teeny bit more white in that area get it to blend out a little bit yellow and white is where I'm starting on this knee and doing the same thing just adding that highlight where I want it to go blending it out a little bit picking up my frog green and maybe a little bit of yellow if I if I feel it needs that yellow on it and just blending it out and then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your highlights and sh uh, and blending done you can uh, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our fingers toes eyes and mouths so I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to be using orange, yellow, white, black, and if I need to go into any other colors, I will do that. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with just orange paint on my brush. I'm going to be doing just little circles for the tips of each of the fingers and toes as if they're those little suction cups. So I just have a little bit of orange on my brush. I'm going to be doing these cute little circles I'm going to have a couple in through here and they can touch one another. They can be different sizes because we might be seeing them from different angles. So just have fun with this. You might see through them right now, but in a minute we'll be putting a little bit of a, um, of a highlight on them. So if you can see through them right now, don't worry about it. Just kind of put that, that area on there. I'm going to have this one up off the, uh, ground a little bit so I put it away from my shadow I'm just gonna see two on this one so I'll see this one here and you can use a lot of paint too I, I the thicker I do it with this orange paint the more vibrant the color becomes because it's um, it is kind of translucent so the thicker you have it the more you're gonna get that true color to it you could I suppose use white like a layer of white on it first if you wanted to um, really have it nice and vibrant and just kind of having fun with placing these in at the edge of the um, fingers and the toes and again they can be different sizes have fun with it I'm gonna have a couple in through here these ones are gonna be on top of each other um, and then we've got our couple up in through here and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to wash and dry my brush because I'm gonna do the mouths and the eyes so I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm gonna be using watered-down black paint so what I'm gonna do is I take my brush and I'm gonna put a couple of drops of water in it so it becomes really thin like an ink consistency. This is gonna allow me to have a nice pointy tip to my brush and allow me to have kind of skinny lines. But if yours goes uh, you know, wider than you want, don't worry about it. You can always make corrections um, with the other colors after it dries. So on my eyes, I'm gonna have them all closed. So I'm gonna have these arcing type of um, lines and then the mouths, I will just have kind of a narrow 
a line for the mouth. So I'm going to start over here with my mouth. I'm going to have it kind of going, um, following that light area that I had. So something like this. And then for my eyes, I'm going to have them coming in a kind of a downward type of arcing motion and they don't have to be exactly the same from one frog to the next. I'm going to go ahead and do this one. He's going to have his mouth up in this direction. I'm going to have him having his eyes kind of closed like that, maybe off to the side a bit so it looks like he's leaning. And then I'll go ahead and have this one somewhere in through here. And then this one's going to have his eyes somewhere down in this direction. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush again and I'm going to put the little highlights on my toes. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to pick up yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So I have yellow and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm really just going to do a little dot or maybe a little dash or arcing motion for my highlight. So yellow and white, just kind of giving myself this little fun mark that's going to show a little twinkle on the toes and on the fingers and I'm just kind of going all, oops I just picked up a little bit of orange by accident. So yellow and white just kind of adding a little, little tiny highlight and all this does is just gives it that little fun dimensional element. You don't even have to do this step. This is just one of those that makes my my brain that likes photorealistic and things with lots of dimension, it makes me happy. So <laughs> I will go through and put a little tiny highlight on my fingers and my toes. And then we have one last little step left to go and it's gonna be with this small brush. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I am using black paint. I usually sign mine bottom left or bottom right. I think I'm going bottom left on this one. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself some adorable little yoga frogs, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.